Welcome back, everybody, to another reaction to Epic Rap Battles of History. This has been one of the most common ones that I've had requested to me. This is the battle between William Wallace and George Washington. As always, with all of these, make sure you click on the link in the description to check out the original content. Give them a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and also, please, right now before you do anything else, go down, click on that subscribe button for this channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss another uh, video of any kind, whether it's reaction videos, my historical site content, my discussions, uh, live stream discussions on various historic topics, and much, much more. This channel has a lot of historical content for you, and it's growing every single day, so be a part of it. Uh, while we're talking about that, I want to get your feedback into the next epic rap battle of history that we're going to do. So for all of our supporters over on Patreon, uh, I'm putting up a vote and you'll have an opportunity to speak to that. Whichever vote, uh, whichever one is selected, that will be our next reaction video among all of these. And like all of them, I haven't watched this ahead of time. Uh, so I'm going to be reacting for the very first time watching this. And a lot of you gave me feedback that you actually like it better when I respond in real time rather than waiting to the end of a verse and writing down notes and then responding. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. As always, let me know your feedback down in the comment section below. Let's dive into this one. So obviously, before we even get started, we need to talk about, you can see what the similarities are going to be here. George Washington considered to be the father of our country, the United States. Uh, he was the commanding general of our forces during the Revolutionary War when we won our independence uh, from Great Britain with a lot of help from our allies in France, as well as help from the Netherlands, Spain, and others. Uh, William Wallace considered to be of similar stature in uh, Scotland, but of course didn't solely win independence for Scotland, but was a part of that movement toward independence that was ultimately won uh, with the crowning of Rob Robert the Bruce as King of Scotland a couple of decades later after William Wallace had died. But let's see what they have to say about it. There's a difference between you and me, Willie. I fought till I was actually free, Willie. I got my face on a quarter, you got drawn in quarter, tortured on the wall. So, yeah, there's a lot right there right off the bat. Obviously, he's making the distinction that Washington actually won his war for independence, whereas uh, William Wallace won some battles but didn't actually win full independence. Uh, he fought against uh, King Edward I, known as Longshanks, uh, who uh, even, I think, on his grave is known as the Hammer of the Scots. That was how he was remembered. Uh, and then, of course, all of that was lost under his son, Edward II, who was not a very good king and was eventually deposed by his wife and her lover. Uh, and then they were deposed by Edward III, who was a great king, one of my favorites of all time. He talks about being on the quarter, which George Washington is on the uh, not only our 25 cent coin, but also on the dollar bill. And all, he also mentions how uh, William Wallace was hanged, drawn and quartered. He was actually one of the earliest people to suffer that punishment. Uh, and it was a lot worse than even what they show in the movie Braveheart. Uh, it was pretty awful. How I mean, they show parts of it in Braveheart, but they don't show the full extent to what they did. So he says he cut off your bean franks, and that's part of what they don't really show in the movie. I mean, it's maybe kind of implied, but part of hanging, drawing, and quartering was that they would actually cut off your man parts. Uh, throw them in a fire, then they would cut off, cut off your entrails, but they would do it in such a way that you could actually see it being thrown into the fire, and then eventually you were beheaded. So it was a pretty brutal way to die, really. So he talks about a grill of sheep teeth, and you can see how awful his teeth are here. And everybody talks about George Washington having wooden teeth and things like that. That wasn't necessarily true. He actually typically had, uh, at the time, false teeth were made from a variety of sources, including dead people, but also from animals and things like that. And, and he had a lot of discomfort, especially when he was president uh, later in life. He, he suffered a lot of discomfort because the, the, the false teeth that he wore, you know, it's not like it is in modern times where they can fit them perfectly to you. I mean, they were very uncomfortable. He preferred not to wear them. So anytime he did wear them, they were really uncomfortable for him. 
I got a state and a day and a DC President's Day. He's got the state of Washington, uh, Washington DC, our capital of our country. Uh, he's just talking about how William Wallace's legacy is the movie by Mel Gibson, which is really inaccurate, and I'm sure we'll get into more of that. Roll up in a boat, stroll, sleep and cut your throat, stroll. Watch the blood flow. Now who's got that red car? So he talks about rowing up in the boat. That's obviously uh, kind of referring to uh, this brilliant. Uh, campaign by George Washington uh, to take Trenton uh, at the end of 1776. 1776 was a complete disaster for the American army. Right about the time that the United States declared independence, everything fell apart in the war. Um, George Washington lost New York, uh, lost a good chunk of his army, and eventually had to retreat all the way down across the river and barely escape the British forces. Uh, and he's facing a situation where he's got a couple of thousand men uh, a lot of their enlistments are about to run out, and he's got to do something. And so that's when they do this attack where they sneak across on Christmas night, uh, sneak across the river, and surprise Trenton and take uh, basically a, a thousand Hessian troops without losing a man, um, pretty much. And uh, they suffered some wounded, including James Monroe, the future president, was wounded at Trenton. But by and large, it was a brilliant victory, and they followed that up a week later at Princeton. Look at you in your little blousey outfit, looking like a stiffer white dick than your monument. I'll knock you the fuck out, mate. You died owning slaves. I died set a man free. That's a good point. I mean, George Washington did die owning slaves, and Washington's legacy includes the end of the Revolutionary War, where uh, he actually uh, tried to get back some of the slaves that had been set free by the British in places like New York City. And uh, uh, it's one of the darker times uh, for Washington's personal legacy is how he handled the slave issue in the aftermath of the war. I don't think, I could be wrong on this. Somebody from Scotland helped me out. I don't think William Wallace was a Highlander, was he? Wasn't he a Lowlander from Scotland? I could be wrong about that. I also don't think, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that they didn't wear kilts like that, uh, like and like it's portrayed in the movie. I think the kilt is a much later uh, thing that came along in the history of Scotland, like maybe 15th century or so. Um, but I could be wrong about that, so somebody correct me if I am. <laughs> so the soldiers can't swim. He's talking about his sperm right there. Uh, and he talks about uh, Washington not having any children, which is true. He had no biological children of his own. There's some speculation that there's this slave uh, named West Ford, who it is claimed was his biological child that he had with a slave. Um, West Ford did have some strong physical resemblances to George Washington, but it's also possible he could have been Washington's brother's son or the son of some other member of the family. But uh, it's a strong possibility that West Ford was the child of a Washington. Uh, Washington did have um, stepchildren. His wife, Martha, was previously married to a very wealthy man named Custis. Um, and she had two children of her own, both who died pretty young. The daughter died, I think, uh, like as a teenager. And then the son, Jackie, as he was known, actually went with Washington to war. And I think he died toward the end of the war, not in the war, but died during the war. Um, and then his son, George Washington Park Custis, uh, was actually adopted by General Washington. So he did have an adopted son. And George Washington Park Custis was the father of Robert E. Lee's wife. And that's where you get the Custis Lee Mansion, which is in Arlington, because uh, that was left to Lee and his wife because they were the, the heirs of George Washington Park Custis. So Robert E. Lee's children were the legal heirs of George Washington and his legacy. So kind of an interesting thing there. That's Washington, such a shite tactician. The fucking British Army didn't even want him. He was a really terrible tactician, Washington. He repeatedly got uh, outsmarted on the battlefield by the British, in particular Brandywine's a great example of that, but there were other examples too. Uh, he would get surprised on his flank. He would get beat by the same tactic repeated times. What Washington was brilliant at was he's an incredible leader of men. I'm not sure anybody else could have won the Revolutionary War, but it had nothing at all to do 
with Washington's skills as a general. It had to do with his skills and putting the right people in the right positions and holding them all together. He was brilliant at that, and, and he truly is the father of our country, but he was not a great general. I'm Wallace! Rude, I'm Wallace! Rude. Stay hidden in your office, I suffer great losses! I pop my kill, strike my sword, and my hilt, step on the battlefield, and I'm ready to kill! And all your politicians straight down to hell! The only Washington I trust is Denzel! <laughs> the only Washington I trust is Denzel, and I gotta say, completely off topic, but we all have those people, right, who's, you know, we just love them in anything they're in. Denzel Washington is one of those actors for me. I will watch anything just because he's in it. If he's in a movie, I will watch it because I know I will love him regardless of what role he's playing. He's one of those people. There's others too, but Washington's certainly a great example of that. Hell, is that the best you got for me? I chopped down an MC like a cherry tree. See? The cherry tree, tea, uh, cherry tree thing is total fabrication. That's just one of those kind of fun stories that people share that really probably has no basis in reality. Power, that's what the meaning of my flag is. Donations famous for golf and hacking. I'm fabulous from my head to my shoe buckle. Step to me or catch a knee to the boost buckle. Cause I need no way no trial. I'm dressed like a pimp, best moves at the bottom. McGavin, McLevin, Mick, school ya all. Black, black, more Scott than Hadrian's wild. <laughs> so he talks about Hadrian's Wall, which was uh, a Roman wall that was built toward the northern part of England to hold back the barbarians to the north, so to speak. And there were some other things in there, too, but uh, I'm not going to stop for every little thing. I don't give a shit about your fancy clothes. You ripped all those on a slave black folk. Who weed and you made him bro. But if you think I'll beat me, you must be having a smoke. So one of Washington's primary crops that he grew at Mount Vernon was hemp. Uh, it was a pretty common thing back then. And... Uh, Washington was one of those people that they called, um, I forget the exact term, but basically he had a ton of land, but had no money. Uh, so I don't know, it was called land poor or something like that, or land rich and cash poor, something to that effect. But uh, so you could own a lot of land, but not necessarily be a wealthy person. And he wasn't wealthy, except in terms of all the land that he owned. Oh, Joe, don't tee off with me, lad. If you held my balls, you couldn't be my cadet. My style's ice cold, just as old as Chevy. You're the father of your country, but I'm your daddy. <laughs> so, Scotland is considered to be the birthplace of uh, golf. Uh, you know, I, I don't know a lot of the history of that, but I do know that St. Andrews is a famous golf course there, and that that is considered to be the place where we got the golf sport from. Oh, wow! Wow, oh, um... Got to go with William Wallace. I, I feel like he had the best disses in all of that. Um, I, I just felt like Washington's disses of Wallace were more on the surface and, and more about how he won the revolution and Wallace didn't win uh, his his war. But I'm going to go with William Wallace. Let me know why you think I'm wrong or why you think I'm right. Use the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit like. Check out the original content. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you enjoyed this. Vote over on Patreon if you're a supporter there. Uh, and let me know which one you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.